Hello web developers, welcome to the walkthrough of the up and running project. Um, this project is just a quick test to make sure that you have your uh, environment all set up correctly. And so if you have been following along in the git book that uh, goes along with Watts 4000, which is our building JavaScript web applications course, or uh, if you've just been um, you know reading the git book along um, on your own, that's linked down in the description if you haven't, um, then you'll know that uh, this project is linked in uh, the, the section about setting up your development environment. This is meant for you to make sure that you have in properly installed uh, basically Node into some sort of Linux-like uh, development environment. So there's instructions in the book about how to approach that from different platforms and I'm not going to go over that in this video. Instead I'm just going to look at this and help you uh, sort of test this out and get get an idea of what you're looking at here. So as we look through the requirements for this project uh, you will need to be um, you know working in the uh, Practical JavaScript 2 Building Applications book uh, that will give you more information about how to install these things that you need. You need Node.js, you need Git, and you're going to need a GitHub account to complete this work. This is the book here, and the, the section that we're working with is a setting up the workspace section. And so there is a lot of information about installing Node.js in this book and installing Git and so forth, and there's a lot of resources that are also linked. That stuff is going to be dependent on your on your individual setup. This project should run once you have done your setup properly. So let's um, go ahead and uh, take a look at how exactly it should run, and let's look at some of these basic requirements of the project in order to just kind of get to know what these projects look like a little bit. So. Um, first thing that we do to start out the project is that we fork it into our personal area. So I'm going to fork this into my personal area and then I will clone it to my local work area. I'm going to copy the SSH clone URL. You can use um, whichever URL you want and I'm going to git clone this repo. And then I'm going to change directory into it. And I can see that I'm on the master branch of this repo. And once I've cloned it, I then need to run the npm install command to install all of the dependencies. And that is outlined over here um, in this step right here. So let's go ahead and run that command and it will install these dependencies for us. Now that it has installed everything, uh, we can tell that we're ready to go. So then um, we can look at the files that are in here and we see the node modules directory which has been created by this installation process. And basically we can uh, go ahead and run this and see if it runs by saying npm run dev and that should give us a development server and allow us to see this project running. So here we see the markdown editor and that's that's where our project is. Um, we can change text and it, and it changes in updates. We could write uh, a link and format it with markdown and we will see that it works properly and we get the proper output that we want. So this application is up and running and working. If we look at the command line now, we see that we have a, um, we just have a server running and it's listening. Uh, if there were any errors that it was reporting or anything, that would be shown here. Uh, but right now we can just see that this was uh, successfully compiled and um, and works the way that we expect it to. So I'm going to um, kill the server with the control C key combination and I'm going to open up these files in Sublime which is my text editor of choice just so that we can take a quick look around because the other thing that the um, 
that the, the basic requirements ask us to do is to take a look at, at what's going on in here. Um, so let's take a look. We have node modules. There's a ton of node modules that are used. All of these are modules that are used either by the application itself or by all the things that the application depends on. Um, you'll notice that we also have a source directory where the application itself lives. This is, we'll learn a lot more about these as we continue working with Vue.js applications. Um, and we have a bunch of, of things here, like a package.json that defines all of the dependencies um, in this package. Uh, we also have a, um, uh, an index.html that provides the basic HTML structure, and we can see exactly where the app is going to be injected. So there's a lot of things that we can see and that we can figure out in here. Um, and we can take a look at all of these files. And I encourage you uh, to take, take a look through all of these files and um, kind of get an idea for how they work. But if we go back here, um, then um, you'll notice that it asks us to run this npm build report and see what that does. Um, let's go ahead and try that here really quick. So it's going to build all of our files, which means compiling um, all of the files into what we would call a static website. Um, and so it's going to use Webpack to do this and build these files. And then when we want run report, we get this visualization of our file package. So this is showing us sort of the relative breakdown. So most of our, our file size in terms of what we're asking users to download is all in this big dependencies um, list that's in this uh, static JS vendor file. So everything gets combined into here. And these are all the things that get combined into that. Um, then we have um, the application JavaScript file, which is just this tiny, tiny bit. And it's our editor file and our app file and our main JS file. So those things go together like that. And then we have um, a, a tiny little manifest. And that's it, really. Um, all of That's all that's in our package. This is a very simple web application. But it's interesting to see that the bulk of the file size is actually our dependencies. And the part that we actually wrote, the part that makes our app unique and do, do the things that we want it to do, is a very tiny, tiny part of our application package. We can also look on the command line, and we can see a different kind of readout here. And we see that um, we have the individual files that were created. These are all the files that were created. So we boiled all of those files in our application down to just these individual files. And you can see that most of them are incredibly tiny very, very tiny files. And, um, and each one is kind of given a name so we can see which ones are part of the app itself, which one are part of dependencies that we're using, and which one's part of like a configuration that tells how all of the files go together and everything. Um, so this has given us the static web files that we will be able to work with um, and de uh, deploy to our static web server. So uh, later on, we'll use GitHub Pages to do that. If we look inside of this dist folder, we can see that it has built the static files. And we can see that these files don't look anything the same. Here's index.html as it is here. But if we look in our actual sources, the index.html looks much prettier like we would want to edit it. And that's because these files inside of the dist directory have all been optimized for delivery. So we'll talk a lot more about deployment and everything later on. But um, it's worthwhile to just kind of keep that in mind that, um, that we have these uh, files that have become so, so optimized and, and highly you know, targeted at being delivered to the user in a very efficient way. So again, one of the benefits of working in a system like this is that we get to edit source code files that look more like this and more like this. So they're much easier to work with and much easier to deal with. Um, but then we actually deliver files that are, are highly optimized for our, uh, our users themselves. So uh, that pretty much takes us through the bulk of what we need to do in this project. Um, the, the project does ask you to make a diagram of the components of the system. Um, and so do your best to visualize this for yourself because the more you can kind of come up with a, a visual spatial relationship between all the parts of your application, uh, the better you'll be able to do at uh, figuring out how to put together applications in the future and figuring out how to understand existing applications that you come across. If you want to push it further, um, you can go in and play with some styles. 
Uh, you'll see where styles are defined inside of each view template. It's pretty easy to jump in. Um, you could try to add a message. This is kind of getting into learning a little more about the um, view um, framework, or you can uh, play with some other uh, logic in the app, you know, how the, how the JavaScript is working and so forth. Um, what you have now is a basic application that is based on one of the Vue.js examples that you can um, work with and experiment to your heart's content. So I hope this has been fun. I hope that your application worked. If you ran into any troubles or got any errors while you were trying to run uh, your awesome Markdown application, then uh, you should uh, revisit your uh, node installation, double check things. Um, you can check the version of the things that you're using. Again, we'll use Control C to get out of this screen. And if you run node dash dash version, then you'll see the version of node that you're running. And if you run npm dash dash version, then you can see the version of npm that you're running just to make sure that you've installed the latest. So if you had a previous install of node and had to upgrade it or anything, that's a good way to check. Otherwise, um, to be honest, there are lots of things that can go wrong with this process. Uh, and each one is going to be unique to your system. So good luck getting online to ask for help, um, shooting messages to your colleagues and your fellow students and everybody else around you um, to ask for help. But once you think you've got things worked, uh, this application will work. And if this application works, you're ready to continue moving on in the Practical JavaScript 2 Building Applications book. So take care, everybody. I hope you had fun with this little project, and I hope your uh, development environment is set up and ready to go. So we're going to have a lot of fun with these future projects uh, throughout the rest of this book. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.